<coughs> Reconvene the uh, meeting of the North Reading School Committee. Uh, we just came out of an executive session. Uh, first item on our agenda is public input. Anybody uh, from the public? Seeing none here other than people who are on our agenda. Uh, dispense with that, student report. Uh, hello, hello everyone. My name is Dan Mann. For those who do not know me, uh, I'm a senior here at North Reading High School, and this is my second year here as a student representative to the North Reading School Committee. Uh, starting with academics, a little stuff going on at North Reading High School. Uh, we've gotten to the point of the year where our mid-year exams are about to take place from January 17th to January 20th. Uh, students have been preparing for these for the past few weeks or so, and teachers have been getting students ready uh, to take our mid-year exams as they do count for 10% of our final grade uh, of the year. Uh, the quarter also ends on January 20th, which marks the last day of midterms. Uh, for seniors, college acceptances have been rolling in, especially for the early action students and also rolling admission. Uh, so it is a very exciting time uh, a year for students, as many students are hearing back um, from school. Uh, and also, SATs continue to start getting rolling for the junior class. Uh, many students have been taking those with the ACTs and, SAT, uh, ACTs and SATs. Uh, so this is a big year for academics as we kind of reach the middle, uh, the middle of the year after our nice holiday break. For our Fine Arts Department, uh, North Reading High School Political Society hosted uh, Massachusetts House Minority Leader Brad Jones to come speak to us on uh, local, uh, state, and national politics. Uh, we had about 20 people at the event. It was really uh, eye-opening for students who were seeking a career in politics uh, and wanted to get to know a little bit about uh, how our state and how it runs, especially at the House level. Uh, and also being the minority leader of the Republican Party here in Massachusetts, it was interesting uh, to hear a different point of view and ask questions. Uh, college Speaker Series is about to begin here at North Reading High School with guest speaker Nick Rocco from the class of 2007. Uh, he was a member of Southern New Hampshire University, and this is an ongoing series we have here um, with college speakers so students can learn a little bit about their universities and hopefully plan out something for the future. On January 12th, we have a Lunch with a Scientist, which is a continuing program here at North Reading High School, which offers a, a, a wide variety of scientists um, and attracts a very large crowd, especially in our science departments, for students looking to go into careers of medicine, uh, natural science, environmental science. Uh, and this time around, we'll be hosting a neurobiologist, uh, which I know is going to be a very entertaining crowd uh, and usually fills about this entire room here in the DLL, which is hosted uh, by the... The, uh, I, actually, well, I actually don't have it here, but it's also by a club here at North Reading High School. Uh, very special moment for seniors tomorrow is we have cap and gown fitting uh, during Power Block, which is, uh, this is the only time we're going to be doing it through the year. So uh, this is a very special moment in our transition here as the class of 2017 pre uh, prepares to graduate. Uh, and also for the drama department, auditions for Brief Encounter, which will be performed at the Massachusetts Drama Fest. Uh, auditions for that is happening right now, which will be happening in the spring. Um, and after a very successful uh, fall program with Oliver, which got amazing reviews and uh, I believe almost sold out every single show, um, we believe this is going to be another great success here from the drama department. And also winter sports are in, are in full effect. Uh, a few notables, the boys hockey team is 6-0 uh, uh, and oh, and they just beat Masco 5 to nothing uh, over the holiday break, which is unbelievable for the boys, especially beating Masco, which is such a close competitor to us. Uh, the boys track team is 3-2 and two, with the girls team being 4-1. and one. Uh, They had a meet today. I'm not sure how it finished up, but that was a um, three-town meet. And then with boys basketball is 5-1, uh, and one, uh, beating Amesbury the other day by, I believe, almost 35 points. And they have a game tonight in Ipswich with the girls taking uh, – facing uh, Ipswich right now in the gym. Uh, and also, the, I believe this is the first year that our, our ski team has began here at North Reading High School, uh, which is really wonderful to see, especially living in Massachusetts, really taking advantage of the, uh, the mountains and hills we have around here with Bradford, New Hampshire, and everything like that. So that's it for me on the, on the academics, fine arts, and sports front. Uh, and for my student work tonight, this is an uh, essay I had written on in um, our Honors British Literature class. Uh, I apologize for there not being many corrections on it. I'll pass it around right now, being that everything is digital nowadays. But this, uh, this essay I had written on A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare is one of the most famous British uh, authors there is. And, and talks, about the, talks about reason and love and how the two can sometimes come together and for the worse and sometimes the better really um, treat people differently. So with reason and love, reason we tend to think with our heads and love we tend to think with our hearts. Uh, and a lot of the times in any situation, we, re we let reason and love intertwine with each other and sometimes it can have a, uh, a worse effect than we thought. 
So that was an essay we had written for our British literature class, uh, and it was really a great way to get into um, famous British literature, including William Shakespeare and many pieces of his work. And now we're on our poem unit, so uh, it's been a great class, and we've been writing a ton of essays. So that, that's it for me. <laughs> Mr. Chair? The hockey team seven and zero. Seven and zero. I apologize. Seven I eight. hope that's on the record. Seven and zero. Seven and zero. Give me the mic. Seven and zero. <laughs> and they have two big games. The three big games coming up. They got North Andover, Triton, and Newburyport. Yeah, they um, had a tough five-game stretch there. They've won the first two. So. Right. Right. And uh, our, the winter sports teams are great. You mentioned Oliver again. That was a tremendous uh, uh, performance by the Maskers again. Uh, yeah. The sets, year. the music, everything. The performance yeah. overall was was really good. Outstanding. How's the baseball team looking? Good. We actually uh, just started our captain's practices the other day, so we've been utilizing the turf area and the fitness center. So uh, up in the batting cages. Yeah, we'll be good yeah. this year. All right. Yeah. No I'm gonna problem. hold you to that. Yeah, hold it. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Nosey knows. <laughs> no, all that athletic performance is very good, but it's not nearly as good as Dan's performance when he comes in here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I particularly appreciate that you enjoyed uh, your visit with Shakespeare. Oh, one love of my, it. One of my favorite uh, authors, actually. Will you be attending the inauguration? I am, actually. You are? Yeah. I thought you might be. He yeah. told me that today. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, uh, I'm driving down on Thursday. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to miss it. All I can say about Dan is he was right. <laughs> he saw it before all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank oh. you, Danny. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. Thank you. I think... Uh, in consideration of our guest, we'll uh, move right on to uh, uh, new business and a presentation of representatives of Northeast Metropolitan Regional Vocational High School is uh, Judy Diamond, uh, North Reading's uh, representative, and uh, Mr. David DeBarry, the superintendent and director, and uh, Ms. Carla Scruzarella, the principal. And we'll pass it on to the folks to uh, Thank you very make much a presentation for of the programs and, and initiatives taking place there. Thank you very much for inviting us here again this year. It's something we really do look forward to. Um, and it, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our two new administrators. Those of you already know, David DeBerry, uh, who was our principal last year, is now our superintendent. And to my right is Carlos Gazzarella, who is our new principal. And um, we are very happy to have her on board, too. We've had some very exciting things going on at Northeast um, that pertains to North Reading. We've had two students recently from North Reading just uh, won the Abigail Adams Scholarship, which is, uh, as you know, a great honor. And also, we've been involved at the uh, North Reading Little League field, helping to rebuild the dugouts there, work on sub several of the buildings, and getting it up and running to give a good presentation because, as you know, they are hosting a Little League World Series. Right. So when they came forward and asked me about doing something, it was with great pleasure that uh, I presented to our school committee and that uh, we did that. And I have to say, two of the students, the carpentry students up from North Reading, and to see them with such pride working on that was, was really great to see, as well as the students from other cities and towns that also played there. And I believe, I think Mr. DeBerry's hoping his son's gonna play there in the <laughs> World <laughs> Series. <laughs> uh, so um, that's just some of the things I'd like to share. I know there's a lot of interest in uh, what's coming up in regards to our new school, and I'm sure that's really top reason why you have us here tonight. <laughs> And so I am now going to turn it over to Mr. DeBerry, and uh, he can address where we are with that, and we'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Mr. DeBerry. Take this over here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, and again, thanks for having us. Uh, Ms. Diamond and I shared at dinner, we, um, we stopped at Joe Fish, and, and it was very special because we happened to bump into one of our co-op students who was working there, and also um, one of our, our culinary arts students who is a part-time worker there. Mm. So, and we got to talking, the three of us, about the special relationship that we have with North Reading. And you've always been very supportive of us. And we, we were, felt so privileged when we got the opportunity to give back with the Little League project. Um, but it, it really was an important project for our students. Um, we've had a focus this past year especially on employability skills and we, we're trying to stay in line with the governor's initial initiative which we strongly agree with. So for our students to be out there working on a job 
um, identical to what they'll see when they get out and in, into the workforce was a great pl privilege for us, other than to provide some um, great resources for the town. We are happy to say we're back to being a level one school. We, we took a drop um, last year for the first time and we dropped down to level two and we really worked hard with our math department and we got ourselves right back up to level one. Um, so we're very happy about that. We've improved in our co-op numbers, our MCAS scores and our Abigail Adams scholarship recipients were a total of 85 this year. So we're very happy with some of the progress we've made. Last week we had a legislative breakfast really to introduce um, a long-term goal of a new building such as what you have here. Um, we're in the very early stages, um, too early to even talk about money and numbers and different things, but it's something that we really wanted to share with everyone from the beginning. So um, it's an exciting time. My son's calling me on FaceTime, I apologize. <laughs> I have an iWatch, I never, I didn't know pay, <laughs> FaceTime worked on an iWatch, <laughs> but I guess it does. <laughs> I'll have to show him a copy of this. Um, so anyway, um, if anyone has any questions about the project, I'd be happy to answer them. I would, you know, just like to stop by saying we did a pre-feasibility study. It's not something that's required, but it's something that out of the Northeast budget, we really wanted to look at whether this was something that we wanted to bring forward to the towns for consideration. Um, so we looked at three options. We looked at a new building, we looked at a complete renovation, and we looked at the possibility of a renovation with an addition to see what the best um, the process would be for us. And we used uh, the architect, the same architect that worked here on this building. Oh, you used Doran Whittier? Yeah, okay. yeah. So if you have any questions. Cliff, go ahead. So, so where are you in terms of um, the statement of interest, uh, you know, submitting a statement of interest to MSBA? Right, so, so we were not accepted this year. Okay. Um, so we just found that out um, a couple days ago, we got our letter um, that said we weren't accepted, but we feel confident going into next year. We knew um, this year would be difficult because it was very well known that there was some major projects that were on the MSBA list that were going to take up the majority of the funding. Right. So we're looking towards next year, just like many other communities, and feel confident we'll have a much better opportunity to get in. Just as a follow-up, when are the three options, have you decided which mm. option you're going to pursue? Yes, it would absolutely have to be a new building. That's what I expected. Yeah. Um, and it, it actually, it was nice, though, to see it um, in black and white and what the cost would be so that when we go to towns, we can show you, hey, we just don't want a new building. This is what the other two options would cost, which would actually be much more than a new building. And so you, you don't know yet at this time what your reimbursement rate would be from MSBA, do you? Yeah, we had, if we were accepted this year, it would have been above 72%. Wow. wow. So 72% would have been the minimum. That's great. Um, so we are also confident that that would be a similar number next year as well if we're accepted. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a good question. And do you have to have approval of uh, all of the towns in the district, or is it a majority? Or? Yes, so there are two options. We'd have to have a unanimous approval from all of the different um, town boards, or we can go uh, for a vote, a ballot election. Um, our goal would be to get support from the towns, um, from the boards. And then, you know, if that didn't work out to really step back and, and take a look at what the section op second option would entail. But we, we want support from the boards. Because I think one, one of the things that we're gonna have, in fact, I, I don't understand it, and maybe some on the other, right, on the board here do, how it's determined, is it how it's determined what each town pays mm -hmm. the school? Obviously, part of it's gonna be how many students you're sending there, but there's gotta be other issues also, what I would assume that will come into play. Right. right. It would go back to the original agreement, which would be based on how many students you have there. Okay. So um, we wouldn't expect North Reading to really feel it right. um, or, you know, notice much of a difference in what you would pay. So we'd pay, we'd essentially pay through how much we right so if you for each student right right so if you had 33 students out of 1250 right. we would divide it up it would okay. be a very 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 
little small cost for for North Reading compared to some of the other towns. And some of those other cities and towns, though, now, if you get, say you get 75%, let's just throw that out there, but you're talking about some of the other cities and towns that aren't um, property rich, you know, some of the inner city right. kids that come there, do they also, get, could they get federal money or do, will they have to raise their taxes? I mean, how, how does it work for... Them, right, like, uh, Chelsea or Everett or whoever. Right, it, it would cost a little more for those towns. Yeah. However, um, you know, one thing we we're able to break down at our legislative breakfast is when you're dividing amongst 12 towns over a 30 year bond at 72%, it really shouldn't make that great of a difference that it would hurt a community yeah. as far as needing an override or really feeling it in their yearly budget. I think it's clear that. Um, you need a new facility there. I think it's yeah. a, mm -hmm. crystal clear. And I think it's also clear um, that, well, it's clear to me, that more kids should be going to um, vocational mm -hmm. technical schools and not some kids, I think, feel like they have to go to college in order to be successful in life. And I, I think we need right. more kids looking at vocational technical schools and employability, as you, as you were right. talking about. Right. So, uh, you know, obviously it's always a financial issue, but. I strongly support a, a brand new facility there, I think. Would so you build on the same you. site? Yeah. So we have a lot of land, um, fortunately, at Northeast. So we would be able to build behind our That's school. Plus. Um, yeah. yeah, and then actually tear down our building That's and put fields or parking there as well. Yep, we have a couple of flats. <laughs> yeah, we have three levels. That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Build, we we built one? into a... Uh, a mountain, basically. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> our, our site and we created a couple of mountains. Right, exactly. So. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, on the level one. Oh, yeah, thanks so great, much. Great work That's, to get back. Thank you so much. Year. And also, thank you for the help with the Little League fields. That's really exciting oh, to have the state championship for the Little League World Series uh, in North Reading. That's, yeah, awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Carla, did you want to just say hello and tell us a little bit about where you came from? <laughs> I'll just say hi. I, I, I'm in my first year at Northeast. I've spent the last nine years at North Andover High School. Um, and my son played in the Little League World Series. He was on that Saugus team. Oh. Um, so wow. I'm, I'm really happy they're doing your Little League <laughs> fields. It's close to my heart. Um, I'm enjoying every moment of um, every day in this new opportunity. I love the vocational component of the building. I love going in and out of our shops. Um, it is wonderful to see students putting their learning to work immediately. When you're an academic principal or an academic high school, you know, you don't always see the connections students make until later. And so it's, not, it, it's been gratifying for me to watch um, students really take what they're getting in their classroom situations and then watch them in the in the metal fab class welding or in the HVAC um, room where that's my husband's background so I'm always interested to see what's going on in there but it's really great and the kids there are wonderful the kids from North Reading that we have are terrific um, as uh, Mrs. Diamond said two were um, Adam scholars and we had a nice breakfast for all of our students to acknowledge that it's a big accomplishment especially um, you know you're familiar I'm sure with our schedule they're only in academics every other week so the fact that they're able to um, attain that level is is great and the fact that we bounced back to a level one I uh, I worked for three years in North Andover trying to get us back to level one it's not easy, not easy. We, you have to really put your nose to the grindstone and the staff and the students did a fantastic job in that short amount of time to get the school back up to level one so I'm really proud and pleased to be there if you're really interested in HVAC you should uh, meet with our facilities manager and take a walk around and see that <laughs> see the stuff we have here it's 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 I think um, you're better off just opening and closing the windows exactly. without any yeah. <laughs> everything's computerized and digitized oh, yeah. and you know you touch one thing yeah and 47 <laughs> other things and, and, and by the way there's hardly a meeting that we have of the school committee that there's not some connection to Saugus it's a deeper one than you know a, yeah uh, uh, I want you to know that John was my student <laughs> he was your student now yes. what about the other way around no oh no my first year <laughs> oh my teaching God. I had the privilege of having John and in then class. her son was my student. and my two sons had Mr. Bernard Imagine wow. that. <laughs> was he a good student he was, oh, the poor kid, I don't know how he really became a teacher. Oh, I was only in my first year, it was not a great situation. <laughs> did, you, did you teach English though? What did no, you, I was a history social teacher. Studies. Uh, <laughs> yep. 
Excellent. So he long, put up with long, a lot. Long, long, a lot of years. Well, I think it's, you know, as long as it was a non-math subject, I think John would have done all right. <laughs> <laughs> what what they true. don't realize is that e every time they come to a meeting, they have an association with Saugus. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. My first 16 That's years right. of my life with huh? in Saugus. But it's, we, oh, we did the background check on John. We didn't go back far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that's interesting on school projects is, you know, and I was going to talk about this a little later, but we spent, and everybody in town knows, $123 million approximately for this project, and we, I think, ran it up, what, 49% from the state? Oh, 49, yeah, 49. 49%. And I was just looking at the Saugus project, and they're looking at between 150 and 160 million to right. build a joint middle school, high school with shared core facilities. So the costs are. are yeah, Amazing. that's why you, you got to get it done now because the costs are really. Um, They're not going down. Going up. They're not going down. I wouldn't say skyrocketing, but you know, we no. we felt we were lucky to get in it at the right time, mm -hmm. and we still ended up spending 123 million dollars. So it was well worth it, but it's, it's a burden. As you can see, um, we're pretty excited with the team that we have uh, running our school. It, it's it, for me as a teacher there for 26 years. And now being the vice chairman of the school committee and seeing how it has grown has been a uh, very uh, emotional experience. I, we have um, so many students on a waiting list, which really bothers the school yeah. committee, as you can imagine, because we want every student that wants a vocational education yeah. to be able to get that. And in order to <coughs> do that, we need a bigger school. It, it's, it's not a good thing to tell kids they can't come to the school. I would definitely like to see more North Reading students there. Uh, the job market is incredible. We, we have more jobs uh, for co-op than we have students. Wow. So there's a big demand from the job market, and uh, we have great support with the legislators, too. I was very impressed with the uh, breakfast that we had at the school last week. How many of them were there, including the Speaker of the House? Wow. And um, I happen to sit with the uh, mayor from Walden, very nice young man, but very concerned about the money, as, as everybody is. But you take a look around at our 12 communities, and almost every single one of them has a brand new high school. Oh, yeah. Do the vocational school, school students deserve less? No, that, and, and, um, they don't. And, and we, um, we're excited about what we can do with the new school. And we, we look forward to sharing that with you in the uh, future. Well, good luck. It's a long process. It is. It's a difficult <laughs> process. And we're ready for it. I happen to be going in as chairman of the new school building. Oh. So um, Judy, we're well time to get out. She needs to call. <laughs> still time to get I out. tried. You I tried. Call, listen, you need to call Chuck. <laughs> Chuck, Carucci. Chuck Carucci will give you. All, Chuck Carucci will teach you the ropes. Oh, I, I'm very friendly with Chuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as you know, Jerry, I'm sure yeah. we're, we'll get plenty of help and opinions <laughs> from him. Um, you kind of touched upon it. Um, if you build the new school, what's the student population that you're going to be building it for? Yeah. Well, right now our student population is 1,200. 1,250 is our population, wow. so we'd be looking at a minimum 1,500. Wow, yeah. that's a lot of students. Well, right, yeah. right now we have like 300 kids on a waiting list. Yeah. Mm. Every year. Wow. Every year, and Every and year. and that's, that's far too right. many. That's not right. That's not right. Anyway. And and there's yeah. nothing we can do. I mean, you can only fit so many. Um, students and in so a those building. students just end up going to whatever high school in their city or town mm -hmm. yeah with no vocational right so we will be hoping to get North Reading support I'm anticipating that we will um, we're, we're going to be working very hard whether we got the, the um, permission to move forward with it or not we're still going to be pursuing it and working very very hard Go after it it's not something we're just going to wait until next year I can assure you of that good Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Again, thank you very much Good. for thank having you. us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, they meet here for the uh, agreement. Yeah. We're going to set it up, yeah. please. Yeah. I think. Bob, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Luck. Thank you again. <coughs> we'll look forward yeah. to next year. <laughs> Maybe even sooner, Judy, depending yeah. on how things get <laughs> out. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Looks like uh, I won't skip that. Okay, I guess we'll go back to our continued business. Um, sure. MSBA and FFPC update. So, Mr. Chairman, and uh, 
to the committee. Not, not the, the list is growing, I think, a little bit shorter from my report uh, tonight. Um, I'm going to kind of go out of order, I guess. There, there was some punch list work um, done over the Christmas vacation week, the, the, the three days that the school was open. Um, so the list is, is getting smaller with the punch list items to be addressed. And I did want to also note that um, through a little bit of perseverance, we, um, we were able to identify that the projector that you're actually, Mr. LaPrette has a, and Mr. Nosey have a presentation tonight that to use. Uh, we have a new projector in this room um, through no cost. Um, quite honestly, I, uh, Dr. Daly and I had been pretty insistent that we didn't think that the projector ever provided the kind of quality that we thought it should in this room. I thought it was my eyes, but. And so, yeah, I, I started to believe that it was my eyes. Um, but we, we had someone come out. We did pay a, um, a small amount of money, really a relatively small amount of money for a service call, um, just for some other work that we wanted to have reviewed in this room. And I asked the gentleman to take a look at the projector, and he did. And he very quickly determined that it, he thought it was faulty, and he replaced it with a brand new one. So um, tonight is the first time we're going to use it formally. Um, we did, Mr. LaPrette ran a couple of tests for me um, after we were <coughs> placed just before the Christmas vacation week. And I, I'm of the opinion that the quality is much improved. So um, that's some good news. Um, and it's somewhat project related, I guess. But um, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Cliff, uh, just one. Um, go ahead. From a middle schooler, the bubblers are still not uh, 100%. Don't, don't, even, don't even go there. That, John, that you is, know, I, it's no, on my mind. Gary and I have I'd like to get a report from Wayne as to okay, don't so work. as of when though. I, I, because the, we had I Michael Connolly and I directed yeah. Wayne to have our plumber come out and an extensive amount of work was done over the Christmas vacation. To the best of my knowledge, everything is in working order. We defi oh, we I can tell you it what could the problem have been last week because we'll check them when we go out. Yeah, we'll yeah, you can. The you're welcome to check them you because we have. Yeah, yeah, we have. And ultimately, what some, we determine what the problem some is. Some don't even ha don't have much water pressure. Some right, are yeah. too much right, water some pressure. Come about this high about some of it is not going to be as easily resolved as it sounds. As crazy as it, let me let me explain to you what I know. We were told that by our plumber that the 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 pressure of that the water comes into the school varies pretty significantly and when it comes in too hard it was somehow and Michael you can jump in because you're as you've been in this conversation as much as I have that it it, it creates a problem inside and it, and it basically basically breaks the bubbler okay temporarily because this pressure comes in too hard so what the gentleman has done is installed it's some sort of like a backflow preventer it's something that you can prescribe what you want the pressure of the water to be when it comes in and it won't that, that mechanism mm -hmm. converts the pressure so that when it gets to the more sensitive mechanisms in the bubbler, it's not as much of a jolt to it, so to speak. Pressure-reducing so valve. Press, some yeah. sort of a pressure-reducing yeah. valve, exactly. So that was done. With the inconsistent pressure, what you sometimes get is when you hit the bar, it starts off as, as low for, you know, I'm going to say for a few seconds. It's not in a long time. But you will see the water. I can show you, actually, because the ones outside the main office of the middle school, when we go back toward my office area, do this. It takes a couple of seconds for that pressure to build up, and then the water does come out. But it initially, for a couple of seconds, does I mean, not. We're not blaming you, John. What, no, no, I know you're not. I'm not. I, but I, I, I'm this I'm just I want you to know that <laughs> we, I, I was quite honestly asked Wayne to get our plumber that we have a contracted service with. I wanted them in here to address the, the, the ones I was most concerned were uh, four in the gym area. There were two yeah. in the weight room and two in the auxiliary gym. Well, Main Street, too. Right. I mean, that's they, what oh, the that's, public is using. But that, that to, I, I believe they're all repaired. Okay. okay. So right. it was a problem up until the Christmas vacation. I got week. a report today that. Yeah, but we can check. But yeah, I mean, if it is, I mean, let I can me know. I instruct that they have to hold the button longer than. Yeah, but please. It's a know. water bubble. It's, it, <laughs> it's a right, water bubble. Right, I mean, they're, they're <laughs> switching <laughs> classes. Like, they shouldn't have to no, worry no, about John, the water. Yeah, that's what Jerry's saying. <laughs> They've <laughs> had them. Believe me. When I, I was in high school, they had water bubbles. You hit the button, the water came out. Sounds simple. Sometimes it was cold. I mean, it's unbelievable. It really but I, is. I, honestly, we brought in an independent plumber because I was just, we weren't getting the results that we wanted okay. from Gilbert. John, just a couple of But if it continues to be a problem, I, mean, I need to know that. But I, there are plenty of people that reported to us, okay. believe me. Okay. John, I may not be able to be at SSBC tomorrow. So there are two things, um, yes. and you may have them on your list already. Both catch basins near your office on both sides of that island do not work. Yep. They puddle and, and they fixed it. The one in, in front of your, they fixed the one in the parking lot about three times. It has been three times. 
Yep. They replaced the trees, and Jerry's mentioned this too, out front along the hillside. They were really like five or six foot tall, what would you call them? Spruce? I don't know. Uh, like a spruce. They replaced, a replaced them with basically twigs. Fir tree, yeah. They're not the same tree, yeah. and we either need to get a credit for that or, or something because... Well, we had a meeting last week, Mel, and, and basically as we get ready to try to close out the project, regardless of how we close it out, well, there's going to be retainage. Mm -hmm. And we've made it clear that in the spring we're going to go back out and look at all the landscape and, okay. and all of the drainage issues okay. and all of the paving issues. All right. So that even though we're going to try to come to a number to close this out potentially, we're going to retain enough money to cover all of those things. And we're not going to know really till the spring where we stand with the landscaping Correct. issues, right? Okay. There's about 30% remaining. Okay. Yeah. Because clearly it's but a design issue with those catch bases. Yeah. They're just too high. Yeah. It's referred to as a monetized punch list. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to hold it. And it's all, always a part of closeout. All right. And you have things when you need, to, you need to close out, but you have things that are hanging on. You put a price tag on them. And then that price is something you withhold back until that item is satisfied. I just want to make and sure that the both of those items are on it. If the contractor yeah, decides that they don't want to come back for that, there's enough money in that monetized punch list to, hire someone to, else. to get everything done by somebody right. else. Right. Yeah, what PMA and Doran Woody have told us is that we're holding back potentially twice as much twice sometimes as, much as it might cost to fix some of these things okay. just so they, you know. It will happen. All right. Thanks. Well, you just have to be patient, which none of us well, are. Well, patience My patience is, so far. yeah. None of us are patient. Is that enough? That's, a, that's all I have. That's yes, a, that's enough. Okay. Next item on our agenda is the naming of a school facility, and we're going to have a public hearing on this. Um, and it's for this room. <coughs> Would you like to pick that up? So I think, I think Mr. Chairman, what, what you want to do as a committee is, is open the public hearing and solicit um, any additional nominations, uh, excuse me, any additional information on the one nomination that has um, been brought forth with naming the Distance Learning Lab in honor of um, former Superintendent Dr. David Troughton. And following that, then close the public hearing um, and then ultimately take a vote on how you'd like to proceed from that point. All right. We will now open the public hearing for the naming of this room. The, the name that has been put forth is Dr. David S. Troughton. And I will solicit at this point any comments or input from anyone. Are we going to call that the Willis Balcony? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you proposing that? Sure, why not? No. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Seeing that there's no one from the public on that. I'm not hearing any. Right. <clears throat> um, I just want to say that uh, the reason that I support this, among many reasons, is that David was actually the inspiration for this project. Um, he spoke about it for a couple of years, and, and Jerry and I, I think, initially thought he was crazy. Um, we wa Jerry and I wanted to, uh, at one point, build a new high school and convert the old high school to the middle school and renovate that, and David stuck with this plan for a, a joint school with core facilities. and. Uh, also, he gave us uh, 15 or 16 years he uh, dedicated to this community and uh, I think was a critical element in, in making this one of the top school districts in the state. Any other comments? Yeah, I, I echo what, what Mel said. I mean, David, I worked with him for 10 years. I know Cliff worked with him uh, as a member of the school committee and certainly Mel did for almost as many years as I did. And uh, David was a, a workaholic. Uh, he put in a lot of time. Um, he, I think, elevated the status of the school district. I think there's other administrators like Dr. O'Donohue and Bill Butler and people like that, who, and, and Charlie Jones, and a number of administrators that have been honored for their service to the North Reading School District. And I think David is right up there at the top of that list. I really do. Uh, he was the inspiration for this project. Um, he envisioned this along with Janine, who was one of the original members of the, uh, uh, the secondary school building committee. And uh, again, we thought it was just too ambitious, uh, Mel and I, but when, when push came to shove, it was the right thing to do. Uh, I remember David was the person that went into uh, the school building administration and met with- um, Catherine Craven. Catherine Craven, uh, Brad Jones, and, uh, and Bruce Tarr, and, and got this thing kicked off. And then it was picked up by uh, 
Keith Manville and then Kathy Willis and yep. then John. So it, it, David, uh, again, I think David's, um, the thing he's probably most remembered for is no student left behind. I mean, he made sure that every student was included and um, he did a, a fantastic job while he was here and I think built the foundation for the school district that we have today. So I'm 100% in favor of this. I know Chuck Carucci from the Secondary School Building Committee made the recommendation. It had been on my mind for some time. I mean, you stay for 15 years as a superintendent now. That's a long time. Um, so, and David also oversaw the uh, Batchelder That's project right. at a very controversial time when we were going back and forth between the Batchelder and the Swan Pond Swan School Pond proposition. Yeah. And David, he, he saw that through as well. He saw through the renovations of the Hood School and the Little School for yeah. that matter. So. Um, I'm very enthusiastic about this. So are you going to call it the Yukon Dave? Yukon Dave. <laughs> Yukon Dave uh, yeah. Lit Learning Lab. Yukon Dave comes from him never canceling school no matter what the weather was. <laughs> so. Any, anything else? No, I was just on. Well, I'll add my uh, two cents to it. Uh, there's, there's two things that uh, are in favor of, of David's name on this boom. The first is that uh, he, he didn't go along with the idea of converting the old high school to middle school. It sounded like a good idea at yeah, the time. At the time, it was a good idea. And, and the, the second was, as Jerry said, it was not just a simple meeting of um, uh, Bruce Tarr and, and uh, Brad Jones and Catherine Craven. It was uh, uh, David erupted when he found that we were not on the list. And he called those two individuals immediately. And then they called the third individual and they went and had a sit down. Um, and it was that dynamic that, that uh, uh, got us put on the list again. Um, he, David looked around and he said all these, other, all these other schools are being built and they're all newer by 20 years than our old high school. Uh, and it just wasn't right. And uh, he, uh, he exploded when he found that we were being shortchanged and he got action. Um, so I, I think it's very appropriate that we name a piece of this school uh, in his uh, in his favor. Anything else? No one else. All right, we'll close the hearing. And uh, we need to vote before we close the hearing. Yeah, I think you need to. Yeah, I was going to make to submit an article. I was going to make a motion warrant. to um, uh, request that selectmen uh, place an article on the June town meeting warrant to name the distance learning lab, the middle school, high school distance, distance, distance learning lab in honor of former superintendent David S. Troughton. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And now we'll close the hearing. <laughs> all right, and we've done that. The next item on our agenda is a school trip uh, North Reading High School <coughs> National Travel <coughs> Club uh, looking to um, travel to China in April of 2018. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are proposing a, another international trip this time to China for the 2018 April school vacation. This would be the itinerary. Um, we would leave one of those days for amplification like we have in the past um, two or three years. And we'd fly overnight to Beijing. The entire trip is in Beijing, and we would stay um, there the entire time. So we would get there on the second day, take a, uh, like a walking tour of the city, <coughs> and there was a welcome dinner. And then day three, we had a summer palace. The kids would take a Tai Chi lesson. I'm not sure if I would. Um, we go to the Forbidden City, Tiananmen Square, and um, a local school, and also then that dinner, uh, Peking Duck dinner that night. Um, then we go to the Great Wall. We actually would go to this section of the Great Wall. This is when I went um, in November of 2015. Um, and then a, a tea ceremony and a kung fu show. We would see the Temple of Heaven. We go to the Beijing Zoo. Um, and then the Hutong rickshaw tour and dinner with the Hutong family is something that um, we, we found really appealing with this particular trip. So the Hutongs are like small neighborhoods outside of um, like the big city. So it'd basically be going into like the you know the real Beijing and and, and seeing a, um, how everybody else lives, not in like the tourist um, section of it. 
and then have a dinner with um, a family there, which was pretty cool. Um, then a painting section and like an art zone the next day, and where all the uh, Olympic events took place and some more exhibition in the city, and then we would leave on the eighth day. So a lot of this is stuff that um, I was able to do and I went. So I've seen a lot of these things. You actually my pictures. Um, and it's all really exciting and, and really, I think, neat stuff for the kids to, to be able to see. So the total per student cost of this trip includes insurance, and that's through EF and also MIIA. And this covers all of this here. So cancellation, interruption, illness, accident, their baggage and property, flight delay, and the, the parents and the students have access to an English speaking representative the entire time. And this also covers um, the foreign workers competition and general liability, which we have for this year's trip to Scandinavia. And then these are some of the reasons that the International Travel Club um, has come up with for um, running these trips. So the, the first one is really the the biggest one for us. So broadening their world experiences and seeing that there's um, there's more out there than inside North Reading and even Europe, which is where we've been the past three years. And I think that's, that's all I have. What's the, do you have a, do you have the cost yet? This trip would be $2,925. And the additional cost would be the, the kids would have to get a visa, um, which I'm not entirely sure on the, the total cost. You can get a group visa, so they'd have to do some research into that. What's the cost of this year's trip? This year's trip is $3,400. Okay. This would be the, uh, the least expensive trip that I've personally run in the past four years. One of the, we've had a little bit of discussion about this. One of the concerns that I have, and I think other committee, committee members were wondering about, is a seven days for China trip doesn't seem like enough time. I mean, the flight, isn't the flight 20 hours each way? The flight was, uh, it's 14 hours. 14 hours. So I went for three days to China, well, which was <laughs> awful. <laughs> so seven days sounds like an eternity, which would be nice. Um, I think what's nice about this trip is you're, you're focused in, you stay at one hotel, and you're there, and everything sort of branches off from that that day, so there's not a lot of travel. Um, I think the longest time you're moving would be to go to the Great Wall, which is like an hour and a half or two hours outside of the city. So there's um, really the entire time, so the entire time you're there, it's just seeing Beijing. It's not moving from place to place or sitting in a bus or subway or that sort of thing. Yeah. Good idea. Another question, I, I just, Evan, maybe for clarification, the exact dates. So the, the school vacation week is the week of April 16th. That's a Monday to a Friday. Uh, it would probably, we, we tend to try to leave that Thursday night so right. we can come home on a Saturday. Okay. So, so we're thinking they would miss that Friday school day? Yep. That's been typical, right? So you, you're thinking leaving on Thursday the 12th, returning on Saturday the 21st? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So it's actually a nine-day trip. I mean, it's two days. Two days and, and yeah. Seven days. Yeah. The other concern, and this, you know, I favor these kinds of trips. One of the issues, and this is an issue not with you or the trip, it's, I think, a discussion that we have to have with Mr. Bernard and the administration is that um, there's been some um, conflicting information in terms of what school committees have to approve and not approve. And we've, I think we've talked about that. I think we've talked about this before. And the, Ma the Massachusetts Association of School Committees recommends that we don't approve trips that are vendor sponsored. Okay. But that we do approve trips if, if Evan was doing this whole thing himself and was setting up the hotel and um, that we do approve those. I, I don't understand the reasoning Right. But Julie actually checked today, and, and I, was, I actually was concerned about the same thing. Um, I don't know if we should be approving, the, not saying they can't have the trips, but what, the, what MASK says is vendor-based trips are those where third-party packages, tours, 
of an educational nature where the district's choices of, of providers and itineraries are restricted and district staff are essentially recruiters for the third party. We would advise school committees to avoid any action regarding vendor-based trips, leaving the decision to participate with the students and their parents. Meaning you don't need our approval, we don't need our approval. for the trip to right. happen. So that's why I'm wondering if. But I think the school committee under your policy for an overnight or out-of-state trip, you, the school committee has its own policy for travel. Right, but this kind of override, mass kind of thing this overrides. This overrides that policy mm -hmm. because it's not a school trip. And I, 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 know, I know it sounds a little I, crazy, but. I, I mean, I, I think it is a school trip. I don't know how it's not a school trip. We're not sponsoring it. It's that school-based trips are, tri are those that are sponsored by the district and all arrangements are handled by members of the district staff. The district has complete control over transportation providers, hotels, itineraries, and guide tour staff. These trips require adherence to district policies and school rules as well as school committee approval. The administration should ensure that the district's liability insurance provides protection to the district. So we, we, had an extent, we had an extended insurance. This is gonna be, the, if this trip goes forward, this would be the third time? The second right. time, second the time. second with the extra insurance. We did last oh, last year's too. Last yeah, it would be the third. The trip Correct. coming oh, up, yeah, yeah. and then this would be the third one. We so, so we have an additional insurance. But I'm not saying I oppose the trip. Or no, I understand. Right. I'm just right. I'm just wondering if we, as a committee, should be voting on these when our the association that represents us is telling us we shouldn't be voting on these trips, and that we don't have to vote on these trips. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the interpretation we've gotten out of Mike Gilbert. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's re not just us. But all of the districts, yeah. it's come up several times, Many probably times. half a dozen times in the last two or three years. And each time, the answer comes back by, from Mike Gilbert. Yeah. We should not be doing this. We should not be approving it. Why, why not? Because I think it relates to some, it, I think it relates to some liability issues. We lack, we lack control over it. Yeah, we are in control. So the, the schools are controlling what we're arranging. No, we're not. No, we're it's not. a travel private company that's set up. Package. Yeah. And basically, so it's like a it's a contract from the parents and the students with EF. Right. Right. Not with us. Yeah, well, they the, don't have no. to sign a North Reading Schools contract to let them go. They're signing a contract with EF. Well, the well, yeah, they, they do. Right? They signed a consent and yeah, they sent a consent and release form. That's the district's form. I think it, that's how I'm seeing it. Yeah, that's. That's a vendor. I, I think, yeah, yeah, and I'm not arguing the point, but all communities are using, I mean, a vendor. I guess, to, I guess I'm, I'm just saying I don't feel comfortable voting on this tonight based on the, rec based on the okay. recommendation we've gotten from M MASC. That okay. we can go forward with the trip. I, I would like a, uh, just a clarification as to why, why they're recommending we don't That's what I'm looking for. That, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Why are you making But that's during school time? Is it with that? There's a one day or day. There's at least one school day involved. Correct. Right. Right. For out of state travel? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, if it's you give me a minute. Yeah, it's, it's for overnight or out of state, or there's, I think, also a mileage restriction. But I, I can I can find it. It's just gonna, it might just take a minute. I will just add as I'm looking for this that you know when we when we looked into the issue of the additional insurance, we had our the, the committee's legal counsel. We did, yeah. I'm provide really, the advice really on that. I mean, we were pretty specific a couple of years ago with with why we were asking. Yeah, um, I'm and reading. I didn't re um, I didn't receive I have any a, conflicting information there. Just you know, again, just for information. Right. I'm looking at our legal opinion about a little over a year ago, but he didn't, they didn't particularly comment on um, the issue around a school committee approving the trip. He was more looking at the insurance piece and any ethical you know, violations, which he found there would be none of using a third party. And again, I'm not trying to put evidence right. in the middle. Oh, sure. I'm yeah. just, 
when I saw, I remember this coming up. And, and that's then, why, you know, I inquired today right. what and other what, districts have done, and his response was, you should not be doing this. Right. So, so that, like, I want to I wanna find out, we didn't, this came late in the day, so I didn't find out why. I don't want to stop you right. from, I mean, you can continue to move forward with the trip because the way this reads is that it's between the parents and the student and the staff. That's and, and I think someone responded, someone on the South Shore said, based on this recommendation, they had to change their policy. So maybe that's something that we need. I have your policy here, okay. which was updated in 2013. <laughs> so there's several policies around student travel. The, the foreign travel policy reads that the North Reading School Committee recognizes the value of foreign travel for high school students and will permit reputable firms and agencies to bring economy travel plans to the attention of students. The school committee will not endorse, sponsor, or assume responsibility for any travel plan, but will permit advertising for travel purposes within its already established policies for distribution of information within the system. Teachers who are asked by firms or agencies to serve as prospective chaperones and guides for financial or other in-kind gain are expected to act with discretion and ethical concern. That's, so that, that's, that doesn't address that they need our permission. No. It, do, it does not. It says you will not endorse, sponsor, or assume. But if you go to late night, overnight student travel, it reads that the school committee recognizes the value of student participation in field trips and excursions. At the same time, participation in certain field trips and excursions will require late night, midnight to 6 a.m., or overnight travel. Accordingly, in an effort to provide a safe travel condition and arrangements, the school committee must approve all trips that involve late night travel or overnight stays. Initial approval should be secured before any fundraising to subsidize the trip begins, and the committee will only approve school-sponsored trips. Cost of school-sanctioned trips should be weighed against their educational merits before approval is provided. Students and parents should be made aware of financial aid options at the time of fundraising beginning. The committee further requests that the final approval be sought no less than 30 days prior to the scheduled trip dates and final approval be received no less than 10 days prior to such trip. The school will provide alternative learning activities for any students who do not participate in this field in a field trip. A general field trip guideline applies to all trips that involve late night or overnight stays. And then there's a very lengthy policy on late night overnight student travel regarding transportation um, and, and approval. It's very lengthy. I mean, I'm certainly willing to read it if you want, but okay. Not specifically addressing uh, vacation weeks. Not specifically uh, See, that, I think addressing vacation talking, weeks, correct. I mean, it does say when I travel. This, this is a field trip. <coughs> this is a optional. This is travel. Right. This is, this, this is, is covered under the foreign travel right. uh, policy. I happen to have uh, also been to China. I've spent eight weeks in mainland uh, in various cities. Mm -hmm. More than that in one place in Beijing. Um, and uh, I, I just don't quite picture how there's a, a this is a good value, uh, getting a return on $2,900 uh, for that short a period of time. Uh, the, the places that are there that uh, you're going to see are, are places that will be there for a very long time. Um, they had, I don't know, some thousand people in the Forbidden City with paintbrushes, mm -hmm. re redoing all of the thing on a continuing basis, just going around and around. Um, same thing as uh, all of these control, uh, wonderful old places. Did you send this to me? Uh, I just sent it to you. But uh, those will be here, uh, be around and available when the, the kids are old enough to go and spend two or three weeks in China and, and see something more than just a short part of, mm -hmm. of Beijing. Mm -hmm. uh, because they, that is a very short piece of Beijing. So that's my, my feeling. I, so again, I support the trip. I, I just, Maybe you just want to take a formal vote don't know if I want to vote on it tonight based on what we've been told by the Mass Association. I understand. Okay. And I don't, but I don't want to slow Evan down. I mean, we're not saying you can't do the trip. We're just wondering You're not if we have to vote. vote on it. Yeah. Whether or not there needs to be a vote. Right. Yeah. right.
We're really not doing that. I, I don't think so. Yeah, we're not doing that. I don't think we're doing that. talked about that last year. No, it's not necessarily that we shouldn't approve it. It's just that we're take we're not making a yes or no. The, the trip can happen. It just doesn't. Yeah, I think it. I think it comes down to to to, to, to the rationale I read from what I read is that it comes down to control, and I think if if the third party is controlling where the hotel accommodations get made, how the transportation gets arranged, then is the district, you know, not making the, having control over those accommodations, then perhaps, you know, it, it, it is not a, uh, you know, it, it doesn't warrant a school committee vote. Is, I think that's what Mike Gilbert is saying. I think it's what it is. Uh, yeah, it's a little. But again, I, I they can go forward with the trip. We're not saying you can't go forward with the trip. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing that you might like to have some additional information before yes. we say go forward with the trip. That's that's what I'm well, sensing. I, so are we giving up authority over all school trips, not the DC trips? Any trip, yeah, any yeah. trip that. So we're not going to approve the DC trip. Any well. trip that, well, the DC trip, trip, DC trip is during, during school, school time. time. So is this trip here? One day. I mean, is it simple? Just don't take over. We we did we did approve the trip, that DC trip already. For the we did for this coming year. Right, but that's because it's taking place over school time. I mean. Where do you get that distinction from? I mean, who says whether it's on school time or not school time? That doesn't seem to be the distinction here at all. It seems to be over who's. I guess I'm looking at our policy more so. Who's our district. Well, how about if I was to do this? How is how about if I was to share? the Mike Gilbert opinion with our your attorney and ask him for an interpretation of whether or not the what the school committee's action should be and <coughs> hopefully I can do that by the uh, January 23rd meeting and either there'll be a decision of that you don't take any action and the trip just goes forward I would think you right. would and I th do something and like that I did get some word again from someone on the South Shore who said they had to revisit their policies to reflect this information. So maybe that's something that we have to plan for. Maybe you can get a copy of their policy. Yeah, She's sending it to me. Yeah. I wish we could have gotten this tonight before Evan came in, but we don't get our agenda till late Friday afternoon. And I'm always available before school. No, no, but I mean, no, but I'm <laughs> saying there's no way to, it's on the agenda. And, you know, again, I support the trip mm -hmm. itself. It's just the issue of whether the school committee. Is there anything that restricts you from if we don't take this up for a couple of more weeks? You know, you don't need to. No, nope. there's no cost benefit to it. Um, the price goes up like every few weeks, but I don't think it's. We have a quote that, right. so I think that's that would stand for the first. Well, our goal is to vote on it. Would be at our next. It would be our January twenty third. Yeah, it wouldn't go up until then. Yeah. All right, you wouldn't need to come back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why don't? Is that what oh. I'm hearing, Mr. Chairman? Would you like to? Sounds question. like a good idea. Okay. All right. Cliff, but there's a question. question in the audience. Yes. One question. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I went through an agency and I did mine, and I, I got it in three weeks. And that was a year and a half ago. I just want to make sure that students would know because we as agency will add as well for our clients, but if people don't know that they're trying to do it on their own, that you can run into problems with visa. So I just want to make sure that that's thought of if students get on the agency. Yeah, we have a lot of meetings with the kids and their parents. Considering it's spring of 2018, it would seem like that could work, be worked out in that period of time. So then, Mr. Chair, I'd recommend we just hold Able. this until our next meeting and make a decision. Hopefully have an answer for that Right, have meeting. an answer from our council, and <coughs> we don't need to take a vote. Okay. You can okay. just go yeah. forward either way, and yeah. if we need to take a vote, we'll take a vote on that night. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Evan.
Okay, next item on our agenda is uh, <coughs> new academic courses at North Reading High School. Mr. Oh, no. Thank you. I'm going to uh, just transition off of the China slideshow, if I could, please. We're going to use the new projector. <laughs> Much better. <coughs> oh, look at that. Oh, here we go. That's beautiful. <laughs> so I'm happy to present tonight uh, four new courses that I'd like to put in the 1718 program of study. And I believe you have the courses and a course description uh, in your packet. The, the first course is uh, Robotics Academy. This is an academic level course uh, and one that uh, is, let's just say, uh, profoundly project based. Um, it's an exciting uh, opportunity, I think. We've got, uh, as you know, from the, from the middle school curriculum, they've got uh, a robotics uh, class that the students rotate through, and they have that portion um, of a course like this through their, throughout their experience in, in eighth grade. And up until essentially this time, hopefully, not anymore, um, they would have an opportunity to expand that once they got to the high school. Uh, the Robotics Academy uh, would be a sophomore, junior, senior elective, and one that I think would start to really uh, shape a pathway uh, for you know, more, uh, more uh, developed and more enhanced computer science, computer programming, uh, coding, type, uh, a coding type track. It is in the uh, NIPS uh, 2021 document. And it's something that uh, I think we, we see as a real hands-on, interdisciplinary, uh, digital learning type course, infuses technology into the curriculum, and, um, and one that I sincerely hope you recognize as important and integral to a, to a rigorous and relevant curriculum at the high school. I guess I'll take Questions kind of at the end. I'll just kind of go through them if that works for you and then we'll maybe just deal with questions at the end. The second course, uh, Modern History Through Film. Uh, another academic level course. This would be a senior elective uh, in, um, I'll, I'll get to this little, this moment uh, in a moment. So it's a, this is a course that students have typically demonstrated a high level interest in, in some form, even though it hasn't really kind of uh, obviously been presented into the program of study yet. But every year there's students that will talk about, when can we get some kind of a theater, uh, a, a movie club, or a uh, discussion, uh, discussion uh, group around certain movies and certain films and, and things like that. So it's always kind of on the student's mind. This idea, uh, I think as we all see it, as, as a, this kind of a medium uh, film in society and the opportunities to really dissect it, talk about films, talk about what they mean, but in a historical context. Uh, the, the, the course has a, a huge opportunity, huge upside of 20th century uh, skills, synthesis, evaluation, critical thinking. And you know, as the course was present, presented to me by uh, Mr. Osting, who is the uh, social studies curriculum specialist, he had if I can say, very eloquently stated that the course will enable students to more clearly see both the events of the past and the differences in the ways that we tell these stories over time. This awareness of how popular conceptions of the past change over time will give students a greater sense of their own place within the historical narrative and how storylines affect our communal self-conception and even influence the collective decisions that we make in this way, a history through film course will touch on some of the elements of a good uh, historiography course at the college level. And I think he's absolutely dead on. I think it's a great idea. Um, as a senior elective, um, and uh, again, the, the, the breadth that a course like this would offer for students to study uh, is a very exciting one, and I think that one we'll see a lot of interest in. 
The next two courses are honors level courses. And, uh, you know, I think what, I, I hope you'll agree with me that when we look at electives in the science uh, department, science technology and enge engineering department, we're always trying to find kind of a, a way to build a better master <coughs> because there's so many uh, areas in the science curriculum that we're, we're, we're looking to offer, again, breadth and, and depth, but in, a, in the most effective way. And one of those is to take the genetics class and combine it with the bioethics class, or that portion of the bioethics class that, what, that we had called bioethics and fauna. And there was this zoology piece that we never wanted to lose that we had linked to bioethics. And the genetics piece, that is its own course uh, and one that's very popular and, and you know, serves a, um, an opportunity for students on a pathway to explore uh, biology uh, and other life sciences. So by looking at the components of the three courses and as I introduced this fourth course, the anatomy and physiology piece, in discussions with guidance, in discussions with the science department, in discussions with the curriculum specialist leaders in, uh, in the, the curriculum specialist leader in the science department, we looked at the kind of the pieces of this of this jigsaw puzzle in, in the anatomy and physiology class, which is a very popular class uh, at an academic level course, and said, well, what if we took the zoology piece and put that into our anatomy and physiology course, and thus added another layer of, uh, of curriculum to that course, raising that to, a, to an honors level caliber, thus comparative anatomy and physiology. We don't lose the, zoo the zoo zoology piece, but then we take the bioethics piece and combine that with the genetics, and we see a kind of a, a more uh, easier mesh of those two topics. Uh, we're still gonna offer the anatomy and physiology as an academic level course, but again, with this, with this zoology piece and this comparative anatomy uh, piece, I think it's one that's really going to um, allow students options, students that have a, a life science interest to take <coughs> anatomy and physiology, or again, the comparative, that's that course, plus the zoology piece. Um, and as I said earlier, kind of the smoother, I think, uh, combination of the genetics and bioethics. So these would be the two honors courses that would um, round out our four new courses, uh, and these two obviously in the uh, science department. Questions? Any questions? These, these replace other courses, or these are placed in the course book in addition in the two other courses, and then we give the courses that get enough students to enroll in the courses. So, okay, I think it, so the, it was your first question, do these replace courses in the-, in the Right, will be uh, some courses dropped in order to add Cor these. Cor well, um, yeah, so, so bioethics and fauna. Right, right what about the- Kind of in, in split this way. Right, but yeah. what about the, um, the movie, the-, the, the um, Modern History Through Film? History That's film. new. That's a new course. But does that mean, is that under the, um, what department is that under? Language arts? Social, social studies. studies department. Okay. So do we drop a social studies course and add this in? No. No. This, this is an additional course offering. Okay. But, I mean, if we don't add new staff, then if we have this course, then the staff or the teacher teaching this course can't teach another course they might teach. I'm, try, I'm just trying to the get course, The course would only run if, a number, if enough students signed up for yeah, it, which yeah, is true you, of any course. Right. But what I'm saying is if, so... You said you had Mr. Osting for this class, right? No, Mr. Osting is the curriculum specialist who, okay. who proposed, proposed the course to me. But say, just say he's the teacher say that teaches teacher. this class, yep. then he can't teach a section of something else because I'm assuming as a teacher, the teachers ha are teaching the maximum number of classes they can teach. So can we offer these courses without adding staff is where I'm well, going. With the, elect with the elective uh, kind of sign up uh, process, mm -hmm. we might see you might, instead of, instead of let's say, uh, 42 kids right. taking sports marketing, right. Mm -hmm. right, 
20, 20 of those kids might say, you know what, I'm going to take this class, and now you've, you've just replaced one section for the other. And we're not necessarily saying something's not going to run. We're going to look at the numbers and the popularity. But well, we're not requesting any new staff for these courses. There's no, there are no, there are no new staff requests. Specifically for these courses. courses. Okay. We'll I mean, be I requesting additional staff. Right, just in right, a general right, right, right. way, not, not as a yeah, result. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. And I know, like, we've had that discussion about class size at the high school, and I think we want to be aware of making sure those core required classes are within a teachable range. Absolutely. You know, as much as we want to expand, and in my opinion, look very much like a private school, because, I mean, I don't consider a lot of these public school-like classes, but I think they would be great. Um, I want to be sure that our core academic class size is, is manageable. I don't want to lose Absolutely. out, lose well, out that's all on that. Yeah. Right. But I think this comes down to choices. I mean, if obviously Correct. if one class fills and another one only has seven or eight students, you're not going to run the one with that's seven right. or eight students. So. That's right. Yeah. right. Yeah. All I of mean, that was a question that was raised last year when we were talking about class size. Like, is there a minimum? There isn't a minimum. So what is that? What, you know, what is the minimum that you that you look for to run a class? Because last year it wasn't. At least for me, it wasn't clear that there was a minimum. Is there a minimum? Uh, I think depending on the course, That's right. uh, and depending on the, let's just say the courses that, that we offer that might you know, support that course, or the pathway that that course is, is a part of, I think plays a role in that. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, right, it, it'd be very difficult to, to offer a class that has six kids in it or three kids in it because we're doing this we don't have the, the, the manpower to do that I, I understand that absolutely. particularly if you're going to run the risk of inflating another class that, sure. that that's right. yeah I mean class. even 15 kids I think if you know 15, 15 kids in an elective class but you have 34 kids in a core required class that that's not okay yeah, that wouldn't shouldn't happen that right. wouldn't happen not okay. right. right but we're up to 30 now in some of those academics in electives in electives not at any of the core classes? You would have it in some, okay. yeah. But the kids have to have eight <coughs> classes, so they have to be in a class and sure. they're not all going to be core sure. courses. So whether they're, if they're taking this course or they're taking some other elective, those core numbers are going to stay the same. They're still going to be at 28 or 26, okay. whatever that number might be. Yeah. But you would not, I think what, what we would want to say to you, and AJ, I don't want to speak for you, but we wouldn't be negatively impacting the student-teacher ratio in a core course simply because we wanted to run an elective. Right. Right. But beyond, once you get beyond the, the four or five required core courses, the students are in three, sure. three or four Absolutely. electives anyway. Sure. Where they are is, is almost irrelevant. I mean, that's why kids, I assume, have to rank their choices. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So you can and they also you have that flexibility. On their sign -up sheet right. So that if they don't get a class sure. that they wanted because it either doesn't run or because it's maxed right. out, because right. we're only running one section, they list their alternative right. couple of um, courses that they would want as a backup. And that sometimes happens, and I, and but I would say they get that the course. If, <coughs> if something like modern history through film all of a sudden showed a dramatic uh, popularity with mm -hmm. our senior students, we would limit it to one section. I think it's, I think it's a that class that, that probably, happens too, yeah. Okay. Um, Great. You know, we, we, we student, tell students very, yeah, you know, clearly that if you're putting this on your, um, course request list. Make sure you're adding uh, additional course requests. Uh, Might get capped. Sure. Great. Other questions? I have a question on uh, the robotics. Yes. Uh, it's academic. Why is it academic and not? Well, I this is, it seems to me that, you know, as a, as a technical person, yeah. uh, when I read through this, I'm, I'm looking at uh, something that could very easily be. Uh, it's about high. accessibility, pretty, I think. I, 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 we, we talked about this, uh, myself and Mr. Downs and uh, Dr. Downs and, and Mr. Rosa. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we, with, 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 with this type of area of science, that we didn't create a situation for students to feel like they, they weren't going to be, uh, it wasn't going to be open for them. I, I, I'm really interested in this. But I'm not sure I want to take an honors level class. I think as a sophomore elective that I can take it and get excited as a sophomore into this and then get that gets me on the path and gets me on this pathway to, to uh, take a, you know, AP computer science or down the road uh, another, another kind of um, technology based course 
uh, that to, to kind of front load it with the honors was, uh, I think, just a little too restrictive. Um, and we wanted to make sure it was, it was the, the students felt like they, they could succeed in this class um, and it would be accessible for them, regardless of, of kind of you know, where they saw themselves along the pathway. If every student comes out of the eighth grade taking some robotics, I, 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 don't, I, I don't like the idea of setting up a situation where somebody really you know, found that to be their passion, but then felt like, but it's an honest level class, I'm not sure I'm gonna succeed in there. And I, I want them to feel excited about the, about the course and not feel like the, uh, the honors uh, label there is something that's gonna turn them away and, and kind of uh, impact their, their, their passion for that. But on the other hand, if, if someone is interested in only the honors level courses and you have it as an academic, then that's a negative mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Right. As far as that classroom. Well, I, I hope I, I would I would prefer that the students be driven by the the, co the, the content in the curriculum, not the not the level of the curriculum. But our, our high achievers are high achievers. I say, oh, I say, and oh, if that were true. Well, let's let's, let's I, I, I'll put that passionate. I'll put that passionate uh, adjective above that too, and hopefully that 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 the passion around. Uh, the course would would they, they don't always think of things in an adult right. manner right. Uh, where uh, they're worried about GPA exactly <laughs> well yeah, again this is about, about exercise. Exercise. I was going to say we've been we've been through this exercise with, with academic before you, way before your time GPA seems a little right. faded a little bit now as far as being a percentage mm -hmm. right as opposed this is about to getting students excited for the course right. work and the, and, right. the, and the content and it's also infancy you know it's early in the Introduct this is a really a new, very new area for yeah. us. Uh, no. So so is this the first robot robotics course that we offer at the high school? This this would be the first robotics okay. course. So high school. High school. I, I think that's important to recognize that you know there are a lot of I mean they even have some sort of programming in the seventh grade and some right. even, you know, tech ed. Mm -hmm. So I mean they're pre exposed to all these yeah, things. I think, I think we have to offer I agree. this at the high school. Well that's it. I would that's why it's why here, yeah. Yeah. One thing I would suggest, though, is, is that if if it's successful this year as an academic course, that we seriously look at offering both. Can we could we could offer both an academics and an honors level, possibly moving forward. Uh, we yeah, can do that, correct? I think that's certainly worth the discussion. But like I said, in conversation with Dr. Downs as the as the coordinator of digital learning, I think he's um, he's got some some very interesting and appealing ideas. Kind of a uh, game, uh, gaming and game development and, and other type of uh, technology-based courses that might fit along this pathway that maybe then are, are the honors level. I think I said, there's a, there's a, yeah, I mean, I, I'm very impressed by the idea that if I'm a freshman and I come in and I'm really, I really have one elective and this is a passion for me, I can take web design and web development and start to get into that coding piece and how web page development, web page design works in, in, in the, expand on the, the building blocks that I took out of the middle school. And then as a sophomore, I'm into this robotics academy and, and to start to, um, again, get further along that pathway, get myself into that uh, computer programming and, and AP computer science and, and, and that type of thing. I, I just feel like putting, a, putting an honors level expectation on it and then, and then creating a, a uh, curriculum that's going to say you need to be here to succeed in this right now as, a, as the first year course that we offer. I just feel it's too restrictive, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm, that's why I think we're all on the same agreement. That's let's offer it at an academic level. Anybody else? So we. Uh, there's no further discussion. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'd move to approve the four course offerings presented by the uh, high school principal. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thanks, Andy. Thank Thanks, you. <laughs> Very excited. Thank you. Excellent job. Good choices there. Yeah. All uh, North Shore Press right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly.
think it's uh, I think it's great that we're uh, embarking on uh, support for our, our uh, town uh, industry <laughs> manufacturing robots. Uh, right. Did you see 60 Minutes last night? No. That's what it was about, drones and robots. Don't watch new and shows anymore. No. You be careful going but out of here. They, they would, there's a robot at the door. They're creating these robots that can do literally yeah. in, in combat and battle, mm -hmm. send them out there, oh, yeah. and they can hit a target or a person by face recognition. <laughs> the ones in the company in Massachusetts making them, they're unbelievable, yeah. the stuff they can do. Yeah. It's scary. Just make sure Thank you. that Thank you. nobody can hack them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Because they work yeah, both directions. <laughs> All right. The uh, next item on our agenda <coughs> is the end of year uh, <coughs> fiscal year report, the town and school department <coughs> agreement. And Mr. Conley, you want to talk about? That? Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, so, uh, as we know, the end of the year financial report is a financial report that gets completed uh, annually. Uh, it's a requirement uh, due by September 30th uh, at the end of every fiscal year. Um, on that report, that it also not only does it encompass school expenses and revenue data, it also encompasses town expenditures not included in the school appropriation. And th there is a requirement that there should be a written methodology uh, approved by both the Board of Selectmen and School Committee at how those uh, town expenditures, expenditures contributed to the schools um, are, report, are, re are recorded and reported on this end of the year fiscal report. So it's a bit of a housekeeping uh, issue uh, during the, the last audit round. This is a report that's also audited by an outside uh, audit firm on an annual basis. Uh, the last time this report was signed and approved by both boards was 2010. And the audit, uh, auditor did make a recommendation uh, last spring that this report be reviewed and updated as, as necessary um, on, on the last audit report. So. Both uh, Ms. Rourke, the town finance director, and myself met uh, with the summer in this past fall, and we did go through the, the, the language in the report, and we made the appropriate updates to the language. I think it's fair to state that there was nothing really significant that we changed based on the language that won't uh, change any of the, the, the reporting numbers financially. Uh, in any significant manner. It was mostly updating and, and encompassing what has been happening really over the last six years. There was some minor updates that we did make. Uh, this was a report the Board of Selectmen has already reviewed and there was a short presentation at the last Board of Selectmen meeting um, last week and they um, did, did approve and um, as you can see Mr. Mosseri's uh, signature as the chair is already on the document that was included in your packet this evening. So. I'm uh, certainly taking any questions, but I'm looking for the same um, um, kind of a vote of approval um, so we can move forward and and complete um, the report and as, as, as needed. Any, any questions? So this won't, this won't result in any dollar changes in terms of? It will not, no. So it, I mean, everything that we, we, this is actually all a practice that Liz and I have been going through anyway in terms of how we report you know, the retirement and the insurances and the debt service and all those expenditures that got contributed to the schools. So, um, you know, it, it shouldn't impact any of the numbers in any significant way. The point of this is to obtain a more accurate and accurate per Correct. spending cost for the state. Correct. Correct. Yep. And uniformly consistent, I take it. Mm. Yep. Correct. And, um, you know, I think there, there, was, there was some very minor, you know, housekeeping changes. There was some old language of things that we hadn't, hadn't done it that way in a number of years for a variety of reasons, and we just we made some updates to that language. Any further? No, I have one one comment. There's a W between Clifford and Bowers. What's the W? Sorry, on what? Uh, Is middle. I don't want to get it confused with the. Oh, okay. Name <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I can make that change. Take it that isn't something that's critical to get signed today. No, uh, we'd be looking to get this signed um, certainly uh, before this, you know, this spring. The next time the auditors okay. will arrive. Next time I'm in the office. So. Very good. So. Thank you. Um, okay, we have uh, routine matters and minutes of December 12th open session. I move to approve uh, the minutes for. 
open session on December 12th as written. Second. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, no budget update for staffing. Bids and donations. We have a number. Someone like to make a motion to uh, accept the donation from the Hall of Fame committee? Make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a $300 donation from the North Reading High School Hall of Fame Association to benefit the high school boys soccer program. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, Julie, you want to just go through yep. these one at a time? Make a motion that the school committee votes to accept with gratitude an artificial Christmas tree valued at $350 from an anonymous donor to the theater programs at the North Reading Middle School High School. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion for the school committee vote to accept with gratitude an $800 donation from the Meany family in memory of Larry Meany, a longtime North Reading resident who attended many North Reading athletic events to support costs associated with upgrades to the North Reading High School's athletic fields, including the sod and irrigation project. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 If I could just on the, the Meany family donation. Um, <coughs> Larry Meany, uh, I've become pretty good friends with John Meany. Larry's one of Larry's sons, and uh, John and I attend a lot of games together, and Larry used to be there all the time watching uh, John's son, Jack, play. Um, John's wife was a teacher in the system um, at the middle school. Um, she now teaches in Linfield. And uh, John was really um, happy to present this donation in memory of his father. He's a great guy, and it's a really good family. John and his brothers, um, we're big time athletes at uh, North Reading High School. The family grew up here. So uh, uh, much gratitude to the uh, Meany family for this uh, generous donation. If I could, Mr. Bowers, just to add to that, and I, all what you said is great, Mel, and, and I would, Larry Meany, um, oh, about a year, year and a half or so ago when we moved into the, uh, shortly after we moved into the new high school, also donated the American flag. Oh, that's right. Um, that hangs in the gym. So he was uh, a very nice, kind supporter of of the school yep. and, um, and a, a nice man. It's a nice, nice, nice way to honor him with his family's donation tonight. Yep. That's good. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude $800 from the North Reading High School Hall of Fame Association to be used by each elementary school and middle school to purchase new fitness equipment as posted above. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a $3,300 donation from the class of 2016 for the purpose of a purchase of purchasing a welcome sign for the North Reading High School. Second. Made and seconded. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I'm sorry, if I could just add a, a, a bit of information on this. Um, so the high school administration and Mr. Connolly um, have been working with um, the class of 2016, but also with some available funds that may be um, in accounts for prior classes that had not, we had, that had made donations of gifts that haven't materialized. And we're working to try to come up with enough money to um, replace the uh, I'll call it the marquee or the display sign that's down at Park Street now, kind of the, with the letters with uh, something more modern. So while this is a welcome sign, the idea of perhaps a message board type sign with like a digital display, the ability to show pictures, I mean, there's a lot of work that's be nice. gonna need to be done. I, I mean, I've been meeting with the assistant principal at the high school, Mr. Downs, about getting the in, uh, building inspector involved, something that might be a little bit higher. I was gonna so say, so you can the, see the it. Fence yeah, line, yeah, so exactly. there's a lot of pluses to taking advantage of that site where there's already a concrete footing, there's electrical power there. So. While it says welcome sign, it may not be a welcome sign only. It might be something that has a more um, uh, more useful purpose. So it's it's something that's probably not going to happen very soon, but it's it's in the works, and it could be a nice addition to. So this is a know. this is a donation toward that person. This is a, their class gift is is a donation toward that, and okay. I think I feel confident in saying that 
the, that the class offices from that class I could work with to, you know, maybe extend the idea to something that, like what I'm just describing to you now, that we could digitally, remotely control um, and be more useful and replace what has been a good sign down there, but it's it's probably 16 years old. You now. mean so AJ doesn't have to walk out through we, the snow? We literally down, down there. And change yeah, the letters. Absolutely, that, that's that's a that's a benefit. Exactly. <laughs> So it doesn't get changed a, a lot. Bit of additional yeah, it doesn't get changed a lot. We have a lot of snow in the or, or yeah, that where we put a long range message in case because exactly. mm -hmm. you can't get at it after mm -hmm. a while if there's right. a lot of snow. So just a little bit of an information for you in the community on what might be coming. Sounds like a, a good use it, of it. It could be a nice addition. We have it maiden maiden seconded uh, to accept a three thousand dollar donation from the class of two thousand six sixteen for uh, support of. Uh, a sign. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Unanimous. Uh, subcommittee updates. Finance planning team met on the 16th and January 6th. Oh, and I'll do, I'll do it before I do that. Benicia, you want to take that? Sure. Uh, finance planning team, as, Mel, as uh, Cliff said, met uh, last Friday, or last Thursday, whatever it was. And we talked a lot about the available revenues for <coughs> FY18, and it's not a good story. Um, Bad. The available revenues for the school department are approximately, I think, about um, a couple hundred thousand dollars more than they were for this fiscal year. Less than 1%, uh, correct? It's less than 1%. Yeah. It's point eight. It's eight tenths of 1% increase, about eight tenths yeah. of 1% increase in available revenues which based on our initial projected budget leaves us in excess of a million dollar shot of a level services budget, never mind our budget that we'd like to see incorporate in RPS uh, 2021, mm -hmm. which is, uh, leaves us about a million nine hundred thousand dollars shot. So we tried to go through the revenue figures and uh, Ms. Rourke and, uh, and Mr. Gilberto uh, explained to us uh, uh, what the, the factors were. I think the Probably the biggest factor, and this is no news to anybody, and it hasn't changed much over the years, is the increase in health care costs, which they project to be about 7.5% for the coming fiscal year. Um, they are still working, I think, with their advisors and their uh, consultants on the best way to go with the health insurance. But that 7.5% uh, equates to about a $50,000 increase, I think, per percentage per percent. point. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's about $375,000 right there. Um, I think there was talk of requests for proposals going out in February. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> so again, it wasn't very promising. Uh, they seemed pretty uh, um, sure of their revenue figures, and um, and so we've got some work to do with trying to figure out what the final revenue figures will be. They don't project any further state aid, Mike. Right? They were looking at pretty much a level funding for that. Yeah, just a slight minimum yeah. per pupil increase. Yeah, I can see us yeah. getting another fifty, sixty thousand, yeah, right. the twenty-five yeah. dollar minimum were, I think, yeah, it was per student, basically. But, you know, and I, I again, I, um, you know, I asked them. I said, with two and a half and new growth and all that, how are we, how are we basically getting point eight percent, and. Uh, I think the best explanation I got was the health insurance increase cost. So, the other thing we talked about was the Berry property deal. Um, that looks like it's uh, they've got a proposal. They voted to accept the proposal. Uh, I think it's a thirty million dollar offer to purchase the Berry property for the purpose of construction, constructing over fifty five residential units. It's a cash offer too. Um, it's a cash it's offer. Cash. Um, I think the percentage of the, I think the town's going to realize what eighteen million dollars. And I think right. I think it's like last I heard was nineteen point five. But it's, it's in that range. Right. Um, they plan on having a town meeting sometime early in March to get the town's approval um, for the uh, for the deal. And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the board of selectmen and the town administrator for this deal. I mean, they, this was a really I know um, they all worked on it together. I think uh, Mike Prisco. Well, the Economic one. Development Committee, Committee that, and they, also the yeah. uh, CPC was was right. involved They're too. Right, they were all involved. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this looks like a real windfall for the community. It was unclear at this point in time um, how we're going to use the money. Uh, I think there would be a conservative approach probably by the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen, but we did talk about various possibilities with that money. But I think it's very premature at this point the one positive thing to me about the deal one I think they have to get it completed by the end of this year in order to get the 19.5 million and it's going to move ahead pretty quickly but uh, since it's a 55 and an older project the project itself won't have an impact on the school population the concern I think is 
if people from town sell their houses and move into those condos and then more families move in. I've heard um, some concerns, public safety concerns as right, far as awesome, not, that, right. not that there'll be problems there. Exactly, but, just but be such more, a big, right, right, that they'd have to fire. You'd have two really big actually. developments on that side yeah, of town yeah. with Edgewood and this new development. But uh, it's really moving forward and it, uh, I think I'd be shocked if town meeting didn't approve it. The company building this is the same company that built the Reading Woods uh, project, Pulte. So it's a, it, it's a good really reputation. Yeah, high quality company, yeah. international builders. One other feature of, of it, which you didn't mention, you mentioned the, the capital increase that uh, oh, right. we get, but uh, from a, from a uh, tax standpoint, you're looking at roughly, uh, I think they said $3 million a year Right after uh, you know, the project. Once they're it's all going built. to be phased, by the way. Right. The plan right now is to phase it. So I think over four four phases. So right. If they build it all, it would be a three million, three million dollar plus a yeah. year uh, tax windfall. Of course, we'd be entitled to sixty six percent of Correct. that, no matter what. Um, so that's what we're, yeah. <laughs> we're looking at trying to get through the uh, uh, budget, which would solve a problem. Yeah. But, uh, uh, the uh, the other uh, uh, forget this, what I was what I had on my mind. I just had something else in there. The other thing we discussed too was the, uh, again, the bathroom project, which, which we'll I know Mel will talk to right. in a little while. But basically, um, it seems like they've committed, uh, made a commitment of $450,000 in free cash towards that project. Anything above and beyond that, it, I'm assuming we're going to have to bond it or Request do something bonding. else. Bond or yeah. 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 Some other. Um, and uh, what else was there? Anything else? I think those are the principal. Oh, the, we talked a little bit about the school building project, but that. A little school will out. close out, but that's yeah. gone well. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was what we talked about. It wasn't a lot of good budget news, other than the the Barry yeah. deal. Uh, oh, it's lost. <laughs> Didn't come back. Uh, the uh, the other uh, next item on our agenda here is the secondary school building committee met on the 13th, and uh, uh, there were three of us at that. Ms. Embriano, would you like to report on that? No, I'm all set. No, you don't want to? Well, <laughs> I think we basic, basically uh, what, what we've concluded uh, we're going to do is to, to uh, try to reach a final uh, number up. with, uh, uh, with uh, Gil Bain and uh, within that have um, a monetized punch list and, and holdbacks that will cover on items that um, are agreed to be in the project that uh, we uh, we can arrive at a price for, um, but uh, won't be necessarily completed by the time we reach this uh, final number. Yeah. Uh, but that's what we're what we came down. To. I think actually tomorrow night at the uh, SSBC meeting we're going to see if the committee, the SSBC, will authorize Mike Gilberto to select a small group of. Uh, of the committee members to mm -hmm. sit down and negotiate with uh, Gilbain to get a closeout number, and that closeout number would include, uh, you know, holding back or retaining sufficient money to finish up the punch list items. And I think the two major issues that we still have out there are those several issues, but I think the drainage issue and the landscaping issue are the two major ones. So, would that m my approving anything to any closeout at all would include the retainage to cover those? Uh, those the the, the those difficulty items. for um, a little bit of background on it. There are, uh, throughout the project, there are items that um, are put forward as a uh, contractor saying that it's an extra cost. And, uh, and many of those are agreed on. Yes, it was, in fact. Some of those are disputed. And uh, some are, are, are said by our side of the fence that uh, they're included in the, in the project and the contractor will say, no, they weren't part of the project and so there's a dispute over it and and what we're what the the idea here is that those disputes are going to be reconciled and there will be a, a number reached try to compromise that on compromises on what uh, what we owe them for the completed project that isn't that we would pay them all of that before all of the work is completed but that that's the Disputed items are all reconciled. Uh, next is the Athletic Facilities Committee. Met on the 13th, Mr. Correct. Webster. We uh, met with a representative from CBI, the engineering firm that was awarded the contract for um, 
helping us and, and to design the um, restroom slash concessions facility at um, Kenny Field. Um, we were presented some design options with some costs. From there, we then um, proceeded a couple days later down to the uh, Kenny Field to look at just to place where those uh, facilities might be on the field. And um, they had marked out a new area, but then when we started looking at it, we said, you know, why are we marking out a new area? That old building is an old building. It's an eyesore. It's going to take a lot to repair it. It's going to have to have some kind of foundation put under it. And um, what we finally came to a decision on was that on this Thursday night at our meeting, we're going to get um, three different options for the current concession stand site. You know, I, ideally, if the town had the money and, and, and can, can finance what needs to be financed or bonded, we'd build a joint uh, restroom concession facility. So the options are going to be just restrooms, a restroom and a concession facility, or a restroom, a phase project with the restroom first with a plan to do the concession down the road. And we're going to keep an open mind. And we're going to keep an open mind. Based on the first stage. Um, the other thing that we've asked, and they're going to come in with this, although they, they, won't, they won't have full bids, um, Rita Mullen um, from Parks and Rec has talked to some other communities that have had these types of facility, facilities built. And it seems that in those communities, the stick built or built up from the ground buildings have come in at a lower cost than the prefab buildings that we've been looking at. So. Um, Mike Alberto and I have asked CBI to at least give us an idea for stick built costs for the three options also. Um, Mike has informed me that the selectmen will be sign hope to sign the warrant for the special town meeting in March on February 6th. Uh, he says that the plan is to have a placeholder on there for this uh, a vote on this facility at Kenny Field. Um, but it would be my recommendation that our committee take a vote before February 6th to make a recommendation to the selectmen to give them some time to, to think it over. I, I'm not going to recommend we take a vote this Thursday night. We'll get all the input. We can discuss. And then in a couple of weeks, have a meeting and, and take a vote and then make our recommendation to uh, the selectmen. The theory would be if we can get this approved at the special town meeting, we could get construction started and maybe completed by the end of the year, right? Correct. As opposed to waiting till June and Correct. maybe not getting it done until right. the following. Right. Oh, yeah. And then the other issue we discussed was just fundraising, um, continued fundraising for the uh, irrigation and sod project. The irrigation and sod are in. We still need to continue to raise funds. There are a couple of uh, fundraising ideas uh, that we have, and um, we probably be pursuing in the next the next few months, springtime, mm. late spring. That's it. Okay. Uh, athletic subcommittee. Met on January 3rd. We did, and um, Mike Conley gave us an update on the uh, fiscal year 2017 athletic revolving account, and uh, we should, uh, if all goes well, end the fiscal year with a balance of about $1,000. <laughs> we've really dipped into it. Yeah. Uh, we've more or less borrowed money from that account to help pay for the uh, sod and irrigation of the fields down below. Um, we're hoping to, again, raise the money to pay that account back. I think it was about $23,000 yeah. that we're looking at. $23,075 um, now. $75. Yeah. So we talked about, I think, a bit of an increase, Mike, in the uh, busing runs yeah. for the athletic teams. That's True. gone up yeah. a little bit more than we had anticipated. Um, but not gone up as much as it possibly could have, I think, to 300 Yeah, we, we are, um, what we're actually finding is the average rate that we're paying under this contract, is the way it was structured, is, is actually less than what it's been in the past. But it's just, you know, we're seeing some more runs get based on the need this year. So we just got to monitor it. Um, we talked a little bit, Dave Johnson, the athletic director, updated us a little bit on the, the cooperative ski team. I forget the number of how many people do we have? Three or four. Three, four, four, four? four kids that are taking advantage of it. So that's four. a start. And um, I think that's in Haverhill. Um, mm -hmm. We uh, talked about the athletic, as Mel already updated us on the Athletic Facilities Committee in an update. Uh, what else? Anything else we discussed? That's about it. That's about it. We did talk about, uh, we're going to closely, we hope to have the girls' varsity softball team play all their uh, games at the new field in the spring. However, we're going to kind of monitor that. And uh, Mr. Johnson said that several of the early games are away games. Right. 
we just want to make sure that that grass takes and is conditions, yeah, one hundred percent growing strong before we let people on. And there if it's to, not, we have the little school facility, right. so it's not a problem. Exactly. We just like to make sure that it's all the grass is taken and and um, it's ready for for uh, play. So. Correct. I think that was, that was pretty it. much it. <coughs> yeah, that sounds. Yeah. Yeah. Subcommittee schedule. Um, there's an SSBC meeting tomorrow night here at uh, 5:30. Athletic facilities committee at 6:30 on the 12th. Norcam uh, 26th at 7. Uh, finance planning team meets on January 27th at 8:15. Superintendent's office. Athletic subcommittee February 7th at 12:30 and the superintendent's office. And we'll go on to the administrative report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, before I move into that, would you mind, uh, we're, since uh, the discussion a few moments ago, we're thinking that it might be wise for the committee to vote on the agreement for the end of year, uh, end of fiscal year reporting that the committee endorses moving forward with this microfield. Yeah, I think it makes sense. They might ask a, for minutes that it was a vote of record. endorsed. So I think a vote that the yeah, school sorry, committee endorses this right. agreement would be sufficient. Okay. So we will back up to the end of year, yeah. end of fiscal year report, uh, the town and school department agreement. <coughs> I, move, I move to have the school committee endorse the end of fiscal year report as presented by Mr. Conley. Second. Motion made in second day for the discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, just a few things to report on, um, and, and I attached quite a few documents for you tonight, some just informational, but others uh, for you to, to have. Um, the first is that um, I received a, um, a letter shortly after the start of the school year from the Department of Education um, inviting us, uh, meaning the district, to attend what I think is a real um, feather in, in our cap ceremony at the State House. Um, it's a ceremony that the Department of Education is hosting to honor um, 2016 Commendation Schools, National Title I Distinguished Schools, and 2016 National Blue Ribbon Schools. And you might recall back when um, results of the state standardized testing um, were released in the fall, um, the Batchelder School um, had been identified as a, um, as a commended school for its high level of performance um, on the 2000, spring 2016 state standardized test. So, there was a, a ceremony that's um, going to be held at the State House on February 1st, and uh, Mr. Colleen, the Batchelder School Principal, Dr. Daly, um, the Assistant Superintendent, I've invited both of them to accompany me, so I think it's a nice, uh, certainly a nice um, testimony, if you will, um, to the good work that's going on and a recognition of the, um, particularly of the Batchelder School's um, performance. Um, the second thing, and there's a couple of attachments in your packet, um, just a, a brief update for you, um, that the community impact team in town continues to be very active. In fact, there was a board meeting uh, just this morning. Um, and in my role, um, not only as a member of the board, but also as the chairman of the K-12 um, action team, which is largely responsible for bringing informational programs um, to our schools and to the community, um, there are a number of things that we have planned for the year. So I thought I would highlight those for, for the committee and also for the community, um, beginning with um, a presentation called Dirt, a one-man show of substance abuse and choices. That's going to be on February 13th. Um, we had John Morello at the high school several years ago when I was the principal, and um, we've been able to secure funds um, both through the high school's professional um, development, development account and also um, the community impact team to bring John back to present to um, the juniors and seniors. And something that we didn't do when he was here several years ago is we're also doing a presentation for parents. Um, if you um, are at all available and interested, I will tell you that in the, in the 30 years I worked in public education, he was one of the best programs we brought to students. His show was outstanding. It's about an hour. It's a one-act show. Um, he does the whole thing himself. It's, it's, um, it's very good. So um, that's uh, on February 13th. It's again, it's a, it's, a, it's a program designed to help students make healthy um, quality of life decisions. And we thought by bringing uh, parents in at night, it might give them um, 
some good information that they could have some talking points with their children who have seen the program earlier in the day. The Community Impact Team will be hosting its third um, North Reading Night Off on Tuesday, March 14th. So I'm hoping that, Dan, you can give us a little press on uh, trying to limit the number of community activities that go on from 5 o'clock on that evening. There will be more information coming about, out about some of the restaurants in town that will be offering specials for parents, families that might want to either go out to dinner or do takeout and kind of just spend some quality time together. Another uh, informational flyer in your packet is for um, Dr. Ruth Pote. Um, she will be coming to North Reading for a community event on May 18th. Um, I know it's early, but people's calendars fill up. But she does a very nice program. Um, I, was, I was actually um, informed about her. She presented in um, Linfield earlier this year, earlier this school year. And she um, speaks about um, adolescent development, gives some kind of parenting strategies and what parents can come to expect as their children age into the um, beloved teenage years. So um, she was very well received in Linfield and I'm happy that we're um, able to bring her to North Reading. And again, there will be more publicity about her um, as that date of May 18th nears, but I thought I would get it on the radar um, now. And I'm also, um, I guess, pleased to be the right word. It's an unfortunate thing that we have to do, but I do think that um, the mock accident, the mock car crash that we have presented to um, high school students in the past um, is coming back, um, largely through the work of our Students Against Destructive Decisions chapter and the uh, local police department. Uh, it's a very good partnership that we've had. We've presented the mock accident um, several times and um, kind of in an off year so that classes that don't see it one year will always see it before they graduate high school. Um, and that is coming on uh, this year, May 23rd, um, <clears throat> on site, probably in the lower parking lot area on May 23rd with a rain date of May 24th if we should need it. So as you can see, the community act impact team continues to be pretty active. Um, I also included, the, this, just for your informational purposes and kind of required by um, statute, um, as in my role as a uh, representative of the Board of Directors at the, both the SEAM Collaborative and the North Shore Education Collaborative, um, required to present you with a copy of the annual report for each of those um, special education collaborative schools, both of which I could just tell you very succinctly are doing very well um, fiscally and also are doing well on behalf of um, students that um, from North Reading that attend those schools um, to have their um, special needs addressed um, beyond what we might be able to do in our system. And um, it, is a, it is not only the right thing to do from an educational standpoint, but it does also uh, present a very significant financial savings um, by North Reading being members um, at both of those um, special education collaboratives. So their annual reports are enclosed um, for you. Do the reports... Um detail how many students from our they, These reports don't, but I do get a report and I have traditionally given that to the committee when it's available. I usually get that sometime later in the school year. Okay. And it, it, will, it, will show, it will show the number of students um, from our community that are enrolled and also um, what the uh, cost benefit is by us being a district um, that's a member. And it exceeds six figures. But um, the numbers for North Reading are not substantial in terms of the number of students attending, um, but the cost savings is. But I, that is information I will have, okay. and, and I have in the past um, made it as part of, uh, part of my um, superintendent's report to the committee. But the annual report tends to be more of just kind of a summary of the year's events. And then the last thing I have is, um, I think we started this last year, if I'm not mistaken, was just kind of a mid-year update from the principals on um, the work of their school councils in meeting the goals established um, in their school improvement plans. And so um, we kind of keep that as a live document. We find that that's been working well for us. And as, as things get achieved, the principals can kind of go in and, and, um, and update that document. And then I, I, you know, I chose this time to, um, to present it to you as we approach um, the mid-year of the 2016-17 of the school year. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Future business, uh, we have a, a regular meeting at the uh, Bachelor School at 6.30 on January 23rd. Uh, we have a regular meeting at the middle, at a middle school presentation uh, on February 6th at 6.30 and a regular meeting on February 27th at 6.30.
and that is our meeting. We have a uh, need for two members to go to a selectman's meeting. I'm sorry? Uh, we have a need for two members, so it was discussed on Friday. Yeah. What was that regarding for the select? Uh, Health care. Oh, I know, I know. The Insurance Advisory Committee. Yeah. yeah. The, yes. Thank you. The it had been talked about at the um, at the finance planning team meeting that um, I have gone to the insurance advi advisory committees meetings in the past, but um, the town administrator mentioned that if the committee um, wanted representation from its own body, that if one or two representatives wanted to attend, and I think that date is Thursday, January nineteenth. That meeting is at four o'clock. Thank you for bringing that up at the. Um, in the selectmen's meeting room at the town hall. So it, I think probably the committee should decide which one or two representatives right. to send. Um, <coughs> do we have a volunteer or two? I'll go. I'll go. And I, I'm planning on going too. Okay. Okay. Let's put right. it in the calendar. Uh, are you looking, Janine? No, I'll put it in my calendar. You're going to put it in your calendar? What does yeah. that mean? <laughs> it means that if I can make it, I'll make it. So what time is that, January 19th? Four. Four. It's Thursday, January 19th, 4 o'clock. I would say to you that those meetings traditionally last between 60 and 90 minutes. Give or, give or take. Janine, if you find that mm -hmm. you cannot, the town you let me know and I will go. <coughs> I will. I should take So I will give the pecking order there. I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Hey, look at that. An hour early.